By the end of this video, you will be able to see how to configure view item event on Google Analytics 4 using the new customer pixel option on Shopify store. We will be using Google Tag Manager for this process. Before we begin, we need to make sure that you have proper access to Shopify, GTM and the GA4 container. So let's just get to my computer and for Google Analytics, all you have to do is go to the admin section and then click on property access management. Once you will click on property access management, you just have to make sure that you have either editor access or admin access to the GA4 property. For the Google Tag Manager web container, all you have to make sure is that you have publish access to the container. To verify whether you have publish access, you can go to the admin section of GTM container and under the container on the right side, click on user management option. Once you click on user management, this will take you to the backend and you can see if you have publish access or not. And these are the all access that you have. You need to make sure that you have publish access. Otherwise, you won't be able to uh, finalize the changes to the production level. Great. And lastly, on the Shopify, you need to make sure that you have access to the settings and under settings, you have access to the customer pixel events. As long as you have access to all these things, we can move on to the next step. So for the first step, we need to make sure that we have the data layer configured for the view item event. And to configure the data layer, I have written this code that you can get from the description of the video. Uh, let's just go to customer events and let's create a new custom pixel. This custom pixel is going to be called data layer code. So let's rename it as data layer code and hit add pixel. This step is really, really important because you need to make sure that you have proper permissions and you set it as data not qualifier for data sales. If you don't do this, you, these pixel codes are not going to fire on the website. Perfect. Once you have copied the code from the description, you can paste the code right here. Paste the code that you have copied from the description and paste it right here. We have to make one minor adjustment in this code that is the updating Google Tag Manager container script. You can see I have placed gtm-xxxs which is just a placeholder. So now we have to replace with the actual ID. Go back to the Google Tag Manager container. On the admin page, you will find the ID right here. Let's copy this ID, go back to the Shopify store and paste the ID right here. Great, let's hit save and now we need to make sure that the pixel is actually connected with our website. Doing these three steps, the pixel should automatically be connected with the website. However, we will verify this in the next step. But before that, we have to add a configuration tag for Google Analytics 4. So to do that, all we have to do is go back to the Google Tag Manager container and workspaces. We need this tag to fire on all the pages of the website. So for the trigger, we are going to use the built-in trigger. I would have recommended to use the built-in trigger. However, if you are going to use the same container configuration for other step, I would recommend to create a custom event. The reason for creating a custom event is very visible once you go to the demo store right now. Let me show you what that data layer did. So let's go to the demo store. Great. If I will inspect this thing, and on the console, let's search, let's filter all of the events based on data layer. Great. Now you can see that we have a page view custom event firing on the website and we can use this custom page view event because it has its own event ID, which can be used for deduplication later in other videos. So we are going to create an event, which is only going to fire on this page view event on Google Tag Manager container. So let's go back to the Google Tag Manager container and create a new trigger. Let's rename this trigger as page view. CE stand for custom event. So now we have created a trigger which is called page view. And under the tag configuration, let's go to the Google tag section and create a new tag. Here we need the measurement ID. We can get the measurement ID from Google Analytics account. You can directly search for measurement ID on the top of the search field and it should give you the measurement ID. So let's copy the measurement ID, go back to the Google Tag Manager container. And before pasting that, you always know that I love to create constant variables. So let's create a constant variable for this one. Let's rename it as GA4 measurement ID. Great. Now we can hit save. And now we have created this measurement ID. Let's rename this tag to GA4 configuration tag. There is one major problem with this pixel code that we have added on the customer section that you can no longer use the debug window. So if you want to test anything, you have to make sure the changes has been published. So let's publish this event that is for the page view. And then we will test whether the configuration tag is firing on the website or not. 
To verify this event, you have multiple options. First of all, let's refresh this page. So we have the updated Google Tag Manager container on this page. To verify if the GTM container is firing on the website, you can use the Google Tag Legacy Assistant and you can see that the GTM tag is also fired and the GA4 configuration tag has also fired. We can also verify the same information if you remove this data layer script. You can see that the tag has fired and this was the ID and it has sent a page view event right here. You can also verify the same information by going to the network tab and searching for collect. Once you will search for collect, you can see the request that was fired and this request is for scroll event and this one should be for page view event. Great, so our page view event is working all right and we have verified it from three different positions. Using the network tab, using the Google tag legacy assistant and then using the adverse data layer. This one right here was generated by adverse data layer. Great, now the configuration tag is working fine and now we have to fire the view item event for GA4. To track the view item event, let me just go to any of the item pages so I can show you how the event looks like. Once you are on the item page, you can see that we have another script which is firing on the view item event. And the name of this event is called view item. So let's copy this event and go back to the Google Tag Manager container. Under the workspace, we are going to create new tags, triggers and variables that are going to work with this one. So first of all, let's create a trigger which will fire on the view item event. So let's click on new. And under the custom events, let's create a new trigger. Let's rename it as custom event view item. Great, now we have created a trigger. The next thing is to create the variables. The variables that we need are called currency, value and items array. If you want to see where they are, you can go back to the same data layer. And if you will expand this e-commerce object, you can see that we have e-commerce.currency, we have e-commerce.items, and then we have e-commerce.value. Inside the items array, you can see that we have all the information about the items. Perfect. We have all the things that we need. So we can start creating the variables one by one. Let's create the currency array first. So let's go to the new and let's create a data layer variable. Let's rename it as e-commerce.currency. DLV e-commerce.currency. The next one is going to be the value. So let's create one for value. Let's rename it as dlv ecommerce.value and the last one we need is for the items array so let's create one for the items array let's rename it as dlv items dlv ecommerce.items perfect we have created all the variables that we needed so let's go back to the tag section and verify if it is working all right Let's select the trigger that we just created and for the tags, we are going to use Google Analytics event tag. We already have measurement ID saved in this constant variable. So I'm going to select that. The name of the event is view underscore item and the event parameter that we want to send are three. We want to send the items array. We want to send currency and we want to send value. You see, as soon as I will add the values inside these things, you can see this tick mark which says that this is a known parameter. Let's import items array and next to the currency we can add the data layer for currency and next to the value we can add ecommerce.value. Great, we have all the things that we needed. Let's rename this tag to GA4 custom event for view underscore item. Everything looks perfect. Let's hit save. And again, unfortunately, we won't be able to verify it using the preview window. So we have to publish the changes. Let's publish the changes and go back to the website and refresh the page. We can see that the container version has been published and let's refresh this page. Great. From the tag assistant, we can verify that the Google Tag Manager container code is firing and we can also verify that the GA4 script for the page view event is also firing. Great. Now we can see that the view event trigger has fired and this has triggered two events. One is for the page view and the second one is for the view item and it has sent the item array along with value and currency. If you will go back to the network tab, you should also be able to verify the same information from the network request. You can see that this was the request generated for the, for the view item event or for the page view event. And this one is for scroll. You can verify the same information from the network step and you can see that since this was a batch request, so page view and view item are both sent through the same request. 
Great. Now everything is working all right. We can also go back to the Google Analytics account and verify the same information right here. If you will go to the reporting section on GA4, you can see under the real time view that we have a user coming in and we can see that all the events that they have fired. There might be some page view events and there is the view item event right here. You won't be able to see much information here because this is not a debug view. However, you can see that the value was passed and there should be currency parameters somewhere here, right? Great. So we have successfully added the view item event. Once the event has been processed, you will be able to see that information in your e-commerce reports as well as in your purchase journal. So this event right here where you don't see any view items right now, this will track the view item later in upcoming traffic. You will also be able to see all the reports that are inside this report. So we will have the session start and then you will be able to see how many user has viewed the product. After a few days, when you have some significant traffic running on your Google Analytics account, you will be able to see all the reports inside the report section and monetization section. For example, this purchase journey will tell you that how many users have started the session and the view item event that we just tracked and the view item event that we just tracked will fill out this view product section. So you will be able to see how many users are actually viewing a product and then going to the add to cart event. You will be also be able to see this e-commerce purchases report where you will have the name of the item and you can see how many users has viewed that item and then added to the cart and made a final purchase on that. Uh, all of these events for add to cart and item purchase will be configured in the next video. So subscribe.